Project Zomboid is in part known for its large open map, where every building can be explored. In this series, I completely threw that out of the window, limiting myself to being only inside the Louisville Mall. Today, we start off essentially where the last episode should have been left off. Since my primary goal is in fact to make the zombie virus vaccine, I decided it would be a good idea to check out the pharmacy. And even though the previous episode was quite a bit long and I had to cut it out, it's exactly where we're starting today. Unfortunately, the clearance I was doing on the pharmacy was attracting zombies from other locations. Unfortunately for them, after only a few days of surviving in the mall, I got pretty used to fighting here. With the pharmacy now mostly looted, I went back to my base to drop off some items, but I was still going to have to make more journeys to bring back more things. After all, making a zombie virus vaccine isn't easy. I decided I would store all these medical supplies right next to my lab, in this little storage room, simply because it would be easier to access them later. I then decided to tag the outside of the storage room with graffiti, just because it looked cool. I then made the mistake of looking over the walls and onto the parking lot. Something about an empty parking lot with fog all around is pretty creepy. And considering some of the events that can occur during fog, I'd say it's pretty justified for me to be terrified of the fog right now. Back in my main base, I started to unload some of the other things I found. Backpacks would be especially useful in this series as I could actually use them as makeshift containers. Back at the pharmacy, I decided to check out the back room. After all, it was going to be my best chance of finding the magazines necessary for the zombie virus vaccine. There was also an abundancy of food here, all of it non-perishable, so I took everything I could. After quickly dropping off all of that, I finally got into the actual back room. Inside, there was actually more than just medical supplies. There was also some stalker armor laying around for some reason. After just about clearing the back storage, I decided I was gonna go home. But soon enough I found a zombie victim which I could use to perform an autopsy which is actually an essential part of the zombie virus vaccine. Yeah. <laughs> 
after luring them to the back room, kind of like a serial killer, I finally had a corpse and all of the ingredients necessary to perform the surgery. I'm actually not sure what the corpse autopsy is supposed to do, but I assumed it worked. The next day started like most of them, just heading down into the zone to get some kills. I then found one of the most horrifying locations, which I had no clue even existed. After breaking my first sword, I decided I would just equip my second one and keep fighting. But I completely forgot to take into account the fact that I would miss. Not only did I get hit, I was in fact bitten. This meant that the run could very well end right here. Even though I have the antibodies mod to help me out, it was a head bite. It wasn't extremely severe as it wasn't a deep wound, but still, I wasn't taking any chances. I ran straight back to my base, ignoring every zombie on the way. I ran back home only to find myself in a darkness event. If I had stayed in that mall any longer, the zombies would have almost certainly become sprinters and killed me. Even up here, I was still far from safe. My only option was to rest and eat as much as I could in order to avoid dying from the zombie virus. I just had to pray that I could survive this. On my second day of fighting the infection, I realized I would probably need some of the medical supplies I took from the pharmacy to tend myself so I made the mistake of going downstairs during a darkness event. While I only saw it from the corner of my eye, I knew exactly what that was. There was a sprinter zombie somewhere. My best option was to be quiet. Zombies during the darkness have particularly poor hearing and vision, and if I was going to survive, this was the only way how. In the pharmacy I had found a box of my schizophrenia medication, which was definitely going to be helpful. Although I would need an alarm to take a pill every 24 hours. 
If I didn't, I would start having hallucinations again. After such a close encounter with a sprinter, I decided to not go out at all. After all, I really didn't need that medication. At best, it would only set back the infection. Queasiness. The very next day I woke up and almost instantly got queasy. This was not a good sign as it meant the infection was getting worse. All I could do was hope I didn't get a fever. The next morning started off with the end of the darkness. You could hear the sirens in the distance signaling the end. This meant zombies were back to their shambler form. I also didn't wake up queasy. I decided I would take a chance and go down. The coast seemed clear, so I grabbed some medicine from my storage room and went right back up. Even though I didn't wake up queasy, I decided I should wait until I know I'm not infected. I spent the rest of the day indoors. And I survived. Waking up the next day, I actually didn't have any negative moodles relating to the sickness. I decided that mall trash was due for a change of appearance. After all, after such an important event as this, he would probably be affected by it and... So I decided to head back up into my base to try on some armor combinations. In the end, I ultimately decided that I should tie Maul Trash's hair so that it would better fit into a helmet. I also decided to give him a gas mask, not only for added protection, but also since the corpses were starting to pile up. After somehow jumping off of the ladder instead of climbing down and breaking my foot, I realized maybe I wasn't going to go on a killing spree today. A quick splint later and I was back in action. Moving at about half speed but still, if I could move I was in good enough condition to continue exploring the mall. I decided I should take some time to inspect the immediate area. In fact, I hadn't even gone into most of the stores. I had just cleared them out. The first store I entered seemed to be some kind of eye doctor. There were a lot of glasses, but nothing really of importance to me. I decided to go back to the place where I got bit. After all, what I needed the most to feel better was revenge. Even though I was moving at half speed, my aiming walk was pretty much the same speed as before, so I felt I still had a pretty good chance. After all, if I ever needed to escape quickly, I could still use cheese.
even with his movement speed greatly hindered by breaking his leg, Maltrash is still a menace. After essentially grinding nimble in front of this hardware store for about half an hour, I finally managed to get in and loot it. After looting the store, I now had to get back home. Thankfully, I had found quite a few machetes and even a skateboard. Though I soon realized you can't even use the skateboard indoors, so it was completely useless to me. The last thing I did for the day was to go up to the helipad. <laughs> 